sites. And it's something that I've looked at to judge uh, the, the strength of an economy, whether it be a national economy or worldwide uh, economy for about almost two decades now. And that is the dry bulk index. I'm going to share a story with you, but what we're doing right now is just waiting a few seconds while people jump on to the live stream. And thank you guys for everyone that's just hitting the thumbs up to get that thing woke up. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the definition of that. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to show you a chart and then I'm going to uh, show you this story and I'm going to show you exactly how bad it is right now. And what I'm going to, you know, ever since I started this YouTube channel, I said two years ago, I'm going to document in real time, the collapse of the worldwide economy and how you can benefit from it. And it's because I was a part of two crashes before the dot com crash. I sold my stuff beforehand. I sold all my real estate before the uh, real estate bubble. And I want to show you guys how to do it because it's actually quite simple. And a lot of people don't understand it. You know, they'll say um, things like, well, what you said didn't happen. I said, when did I, what did I say? And they, they told me something I said a couple months ago. And I said, it takes a good six months to uh, one year when something happens that's really bad, that's going to uh, come, you know, to full fruition and, and finish out the end, you know, when the mainstream sees it in the economy as something bad, it actually takes about six months to a year. And the reason why is through quarterly and annual reports, people understanding the truth of what, but they're only telling you history. Oh yeah. That bad thing on our business actually happened three months ago. Yeah. So the numbers that we just showed you on wall street, now they're bad. And then it takes a certain amount of time for people to panic. It's like a, 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 a vehicle accident. You know, reaction time is that time when you see something bad and you go, oh man, there's a cow in the street. I should probably do something. Then your brain goes, yeah, dummy, you should hit the brakes. And your foot's like, oh, this thing? And then you hit the brake, that reaction time, right? Well, the exact same phenomenon, and the phenomena, I don't even know how to pronounce most of the words in this English dictionary. I guess that's why I should have went to school. Good news, my bank account didn't care what grades I got. Um, you know, the thing is, is that that reaction time is the exact same thing that happens in the economy, right? So right now I'm about to show you something that's really bad. Okay. It's really, really bad. And, but you're not going to see it until the end of Q1. Okay. All right. So here we go. We're going to start with the dry Baltic index uh, definition. The dry Baltic index. Baltic index, which measures the cost of shipping goods worldwide, slumped about 3.2% to uh, 1,189 points on Friday, extending losses for a seventh day to the lowest level since September 8th. The cap size index, which tracks iron ore and coal cargoes of 150,000 tons, extended its decline to a sixth straight session, slipping about 5.6% to 1,122 points. And the Pan Panamax index, which tracks about 60,000 to 70,000 tons of coal and grain cargoes, fell for the second day, down 3.4%, to a 10-week low of 1,594 points. At the same time, I know this is going to sound long, but don't worry, I'm, I'm getting to this. The Supermax index declined for a 20th straight session to 1,170 points. The Baltic Dry Index dropped 12.3% in the third week of November, notching its fifth weekly fall in six. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a chart. This is a, let me, let me check real quick, get my charts right. All right. This right here is a one-year chart. I know it's backwards, sorry, because the screen is imaged, mirrored. Uh, this is a one-year chart of the Dry Baltic Index, all right? So it is the measurement of freight that's moving around the world. You'll see that at the beginning of the year, we started around 2,500, and we are now at 1,189, okay? So a very significant decline on the one year. Let me show you the five-year. The five-year is impressive. All right, here we go. So five year, you could see that massive spike right before 2022. That was at the end. That was in the uh, late summer, uh, early fall of 2021, where we saw that super spike, right? That's when we saw uh, the world reopening, right? Uh, between June and August, we saw uh, shipping go crazy because the world's economies were opening up. So we saw the cost of shipping that's what you're measuring, 
explode. And that's when we saw all of those ships, you know, stuck in the port of Long Beach. We saw all those satellite photos of all the ships everywhere. It was crazy, right? Now that has subsided. And what just got announced should scare the piss out of you. And it should, you should use it as motivation, right? For financially. That uh, notification was out of the port of Long Beach. Uh, I believe the busiest port in the world or one of the busiest. And they said that this last October was the slowest, the quietest is the actual word they used, uh, month since 2019. Now, if you're new to this channel, I su suggest you stick around and listen for a little bit because I might, this crazy guy with the weird hair and about to do some really weird stuff on this channel with cardboard notes, uh, explain that the collapse in the economy actually started in 2019. It was actually in September of 2019. And then ironically, something came out of China a month later. Um, it, the crash was so bad in 2019 that you never heard about. They covered it up and they started printing tons of money to hide it from you. Was the interbank lending rate collapsing, right? And the repo window, the Federal Reserve repurchase window reopened. And when I say reopened, the last time it was open was during the Great Recession. It was actually in January of 2009. So it, that's how bad it had to get for them to open it. So it was really bad for them to open it in September of 2019, right? So now going back to this dry Baltic index. So you look and the the five-year chart started with the cost of shipping around uh, uh, $1,200 or at 1,200, okay? So now 1,200 points, sorry. We had the 2019 drop and I wanna show you it right here. It's right there, all right? That's 2019. You go, well, that doesn't seem so bad. If the economy is bad, it was a shock to the banking system. So the shipping index, what most of you people, everybody here doesn't realize, you were still buying goods and services online. You were still shopping. You weren't thinking much of the economy, right? So what happens, that drop right there, and all of a sudden something that came out of China and closed the world's economies down, uh, caused this. Into 2019, this last panic uh, purchasing around the world. And then we saw that 2020 drop, right? When everything closed down, that's when it bottomed out. So shipping stopped literally for a, mo a period of uh, three months. Shipping stopped. Why? Ports were closed. The world was in being closed. I got to pick my words carefully, right? So then everything muddled along up here until this super spike. And this is when the world reopened. We're now we are back right here to the numbers we are at in 2018, okay? That's when the Fed had stopped raising rates because the Dow Jones took a 20% hit because the economy was hurting really bad. We were forcing us into a recession, the Federal Reserve. That's how bad it is now, okay? So we're right back to those numbers. So we've got a long way to drop from here. I'm gonna show you, and, and again, I wanna remind you that Amazon has announced layoffs before, like literally when the Christmas season starting. That's never happened. FedEx and UPS have announced layoffs right now. This is the time where they're hiring temporary employees. They're actually laying off full-time ones. This is very serious. This is very scary. Heather, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. I will go buy five McDonald's coffees with that. So I want to share this with you. And this comes from a buddy of mine, Crypto Church Joe, good friend. This is a, a tweet that came out from Craig Fuller. He says the collapse in the freight market has created a scenario where spot rates are below truckload carrier operating costs. We could see a massive purge of capacity over the next two quarters. Now, let me stop there and then we're going to get to the story. We have seen just recently many shipping companies go bankrupt in the last couple of months, primarily out of California. That should concern you because shipping companies out of California carry a bulk of the goods throughout the country from the port of Long Beach, from the port of Oakland. All right. That, what he is saying is very true. When you see, there's only so many trucks out there and there's only so much goods, right? Loco Valdez, thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate it. Um, all right, so here's the thing. We are in a position where when a truck, a trucking company goes out of business, other trucks have to make up for that. Well, we're also in a very interesting time where the state of California, which I'm going to be honest with you, are straight up uh, crazy people uh, when it comes to legislation. I love the people in my area. They're amazing people, but I don't like the politics, right? Uh, they're going to try and squeeze us. And so they're putting all these uh, additional laws and uh, regulations on us. 
and uh, on the shipping industry, the freight industry, the gig worker economy. And what that's going to do is that's going to cause more companies to go out of business, which means we are going to see less trucks be able to carry these goods. Now, as of right now, the dry Baltic index is collapsing, which means there's less ships coming from China. Biggest reason for that is because people don't have the money to buy worthless crap on Amazon anymore from China, plastic trinkets, because they need to buy, they have more money being allocated to food, electricity, and um, gasoline, things like that, right? So that is true. That is going to cause a big deficit. And the problem is the pendulum always overswings, right? We are now diving deep and is going to swing deep, all right? So now this is for immediate release. This is from ACT Research, all right? And this is the tweet that, uh, this is what the tweet was about. ACT Research, spot rates now further below cost than ever. That means shipping companies cannot, if they have a contract to ship goods, the cost of fuel, employment, insurance, everything is so great. It's so much greater that they can't physically make money. They're hemorrhaging money. And that is why these shipping companies are going out of business left and right. They're claiming bankruptcy or they're closing their doors. Something similar happened in 2008. It says Columbia, Columbus, uh, Indiana. ACT Research released the latest installment of the ACT Freight Forecast, U.S. Rate and Volume Outlook Report. Tim... Denoyer, ACT Research's vice president and senior analyst said, while we lower truckload rate forecasts on supply forecasts, we believe the bottoming prices, oh, sorry, the bottoming process is beginning as spot rates are now further below cost than ever before. Okay. To put that in very simple terms, and I want to talk about the silver market here too in a second with you guys. And thank you to everybody that's, we've got literally a one for three likes ratio right now. So I appreciate that because it gets the video out. What that means is you're going to continue to see more and more freight companies close their doors. And what that's going to lead to is more consolidation. So freight companies are going to get larger, which is going to later down the road cause monopolies, which also cause higher prices over the long term of the, the economic uh, future. Does that make sense? As, as companies, smaller companies, mom and pops, which I love and I want to support, I want to support small businesses. They have to sell out to the bigger boys. Bigger boys become so big, they become like the Amazon or the Walmarts of the shipping industry, and then they can set their prices. There's nobody that can go against them. They push legislation through that forces the little people out of the, uh, the industry. And that's why it's so vital right now that you start a business. This is a, a big shakeup. Now, there are, these large freight companies are going to have problems too because they are not um, uh, hedging themselves enough and well enough. Trust me, just because they're big doesn't mean they can't fall. If, if you don't believe that, I've got a great company you should invest in called Enron. Uh, YV Rep, thank you so much for the coffee. I really appreciate it. And again, thank you to all of you that are just listening and thank you for changing my life by just watching these crazy videos. Um, you really have changed my life, seriously. And I, and I want the best for every single one of you guys. I want to hear amazing stories like I'm hearing right now, but even more of you guys crushing and becoming millionaires and just blowing, blowing up during this, uh, real, this economic collapse, especially the real estate collapse. Um, and guys, a little quick plug. If you haven't followed my real estate channel, if you could, I'd really appreciate it because I say some crazy stuff on this one. I don't know what's going to happen to it, but, um, uh, I, I believe for protection over it, but it's called real estate ninja. All right. We're going to talk about silver industry because this is, this is on the tail end of this too. Um, if you're a trucker and you do me a favor, if you're a trucker, first off, thank you for your service because you're the backbone of our, our, between uh, the military protects us, you supply us. Right. And I, both of you, I just absolutely love. And I thank you guys for your service and ladies, um, put down in here if you've never bought a silver ounce, because I think you're missing out on something insane, but right now silver is being completely drained out of the COMEX. And it's, it's quite frankly, an incredible sight to see, uh, I'm watching platinum get even tighter right now. And I believe what you're about to see in platinum, I, I bought what three months ago, or sorry, three weeks ago, I did a stock chart on platinum and I said, guys, I think we're going to see a short squeeze. Well, since then the price of platinum's up 12 or 15%. Um, but I bought my coins when I told you guys I bought platinum coins. I bought those when they were like, what, $800 an ounce. And now they're, 
a little bit of thousand dollars now. So that's, that's increased, I think 22 or 23%. So that's pretty cool. But I believe the real, the real blessing is going to be someday as the silver market collapses because everything's being drained. It's getting harder and harder. And if you haven't, if you, you want the truth about that, literally go and buy, try and buy a silver coin right now and see how much it costs over spot. It's because there's, they're draining it. It's, it's amazing. And it's the common man and woman that's, who's doing it. And I'm super pumped about that. All right. So this, uh, interesting the tweet came from Don Durrett and uh it says from goldstockdata.com 194 million ounce deficit wow now we know why premiums are going nuts at this pace how long until wholesalers run out i've been following silver for 18 years i'm pretty close to that inventory has never been this tight I've been predicting shortages sometime between $35 and $50. Now, I couldn't agree more, but I have a feeling the M&J, good morning. I hope you're doing great. Thank you so much for the coffee. Um, I think you're going to see uh, shortages well before you hit $35 an ounce. And the reason why is because we're already having serious time delays. You know, I was talking to my broker and, and what she thought about the market, and she was so blown away. When I called her about platinum, she's like, you know, I haven't sold a lot of platinum. Let me go check to see what we have. She was shocked how little they had in stock. Uh, but silver is becoming harder and harder to get a hold of. And we know because, again, the delays, the shipping delays are insane. Now, I never personally worry about them because I do business with reputable companies. So they tell me that it's going to take uh, four weeks to get that sh uh, shipment of silver out to me. I'm like, okay, that's no big deal. I also vault, but um, I'm not stressed about it, right? It could be scary for some people. Ironically, they'll wait six months for a new Ford truck and they'll go put a deposit down on it. But to wait four weeks for silver or gold, they're stressing out. I I could see it, but it's, it's an interesting sign of the times. But like they say right here, and this is out of Reuters, all right? This is a story in the mainstream. Two minute read, okay? I'm gonna share it. This is mainstream media that you probably have never heard of. And uh, if you guys are big on silver, I'm telling you, I don't have my stuff with me, my silver and my stocking hashtag I've been pushing. People go and buy, um, <laughs> I own a physical squirrel is all I saw. <laughs> Thanks, I super chat. Um, if you guys have never owned a little bit of silver, like this year, go buy a coin. It's like what, 25 bucks, 26 bucks for a coin. Go give that to a child in their stocking instead of some useless video game. Like let's, let's turn around, let's add brain power to the children and let's, uh, let's add wealth to them as well. So check this out. Silver heads for the biggest deficit in decades. The Silver Institute says, um, it says, uh, this is out of London. Global demand for silver is expected to rise 16% this year to 1.21 billion ounces, creating the biggest deficit in decades, according to the Silver Institute on Thursday night. Now, I want to explain something, and this is why I get super excited, because uh, am I telling you the silver price is going to explode tomorrow? Absolutely not. Can I tell you the premiums are going to go up? Yes, I've been saying that actually since last January, and I actually called the month. Thank heavens I was right. <laughs> I've been wrong on some things. Uh, but um, but I said in September, you're going to see things happen because I knew the stock market is going to have some downward pressure. Um, so, so here's the thing. Margie, I'm going to get to that question because that's a really good question. Um, uh, the demand for silver is increasing because there's more patents being pulled out. As a matter of fact, silver has more patents issued to it than any other uh, metal in the world. All right. So that's very important. There's more every day. There's new uh, things that silver can do. But to watch that at the same time drain the, the COMEX is really impressive, okay? So it says, use of silver by industry for jewelry and silverware and for bars and coins for retail investors were all forecast to reach record levels, the Institute says. Automakers are using more silver as the amount of electronics in vehicles increases, but the sector amounts for only 5% of total demand. Uh, solar panels account for around 10% of silver demand, okay? So... Real quick, I'm going to break to answer a question because it, it has to do with this. Somebody, uh, Margie was asking a question. Sorry if this has been asked, but I got, um, could I name my platinum and lithium stocks? I've had uh, 24 nieces and nephews uh, and giving silver to them this year. 24 nieces and nephews? Holy cow, Margie. Are you, are you a family of rabbits? That's amazing. That could get quite expensive. And it, wait, real quick, I got to say something. My, my broker got a call, gave me a call one day and she goes, what did you just put out on your videos? And I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, I just got an order from someone that's ordering a tube of silver for their grandkids, for each grandkid for the next 20 years for Christmas. I'm like, 
what did you put out? And I told her the silver in my stocking and people are doing it. They're going, I'm going to buy a tube of silver. And for the next 20 years, I have something to give because I've just fixed in my cost. No matter if silver goes to 35, a hundred bucks, 200 bucks someday. Um, and I'm not joking. I'm, I'm that crazy guy that's saying there will be a day it will happen, uh, in my lifetime where you say multi hundred dollar silver because of the sheer demand. And it's just starting right now, regardless of what price you see. And trust me, I bought silver at 50 bucks. Um, and I'm okay with it dropping. Trust me, I was super happy. But uh, the the platinum, the the lithium stock is called Terralac Resources, and I'm not joking. Uh, I wanted to tell everybody about it before they start really moving uh, the you know the news. This is a pretty new exploration play. It started uh, about three months ago, or no, sorry, six months ago. They've got three or four properties in the company right now, and they just literally got an OTC listing last week. So it's Terralac, T-E-R-A-L-A-C-H. I'm actually going to do a video about it and put it an actual video with a, 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 a guy that's really into commodity stocks uh, on Tuesday. I think it should be coming out, but I haven't even filmed it yet. So that's the answer for that. Um so, okay, check this out. Demand in India, okay? Now, again, we're talking about the shortage of silver. Demand in India almost doubled in 2022 as buyers took advantage of low prices to replenish stockpiles drawn down in 2020 and 2021. The reason why there was, uh, there was uh, stockpiles drawn down is because as the spot price collapsed when the stock market crashed in 2020, and I was showing you that on the um, Dry Baltic Index chart, People like me dove in. We had cash on the side and we bought up everything we could. We're very happy right now, right? Because I, I love it when people are like, how's that silver investment going for you? I'm like, um, I doubled my money. I don't know. Uh, is that not good? I guess that's not good these days. But my point being is that I'm very happy, okay? And if I'm happy, oh, actually, if you're happy, I'm happy. But if I'm happy, you're also happy if you're paying attention to this stuff because it's insane. So think about this. Demand from India. Now we're talking, was it third third largest economy in the world? Fourth? I don't remember the, the number. Put it in the comment section for me below. If you guys know, Google it real quick. Quick Google search. How, what size is India? Maybe it's fifth. Demand for silver almost doubled this year. And we're not even done yet. We still have a full month to go, okay? And I have a feeling silver Christmas, that hashtag is really going to start moving, all right? Exchange traded funds, ETF storing silver for investors shrank. Why? Because they're they're pulling out uh, physical and the uh, the luster went away, right? Everybody got onto these interesting fang stocks, which now are crumbling. However, returning metal to the market, uh, but the Silver Institute does not count ETFs as physical demand because they only store wholesale silver bars and do not rework them. And not only that, they only store a, a very small percentage. There's a, a ratio of how much silver to how many contracts they have out there. And it's very small. All right. So there is a, um, you're going to see someday that, and that's what's happening with COMEX is the veil is going to be uncovered. But also as the inventories pull out, it's going to cause the COMEX, because they're taking physical delivery, as they get down to that ratio, that, that red line number, it's going to force them to go onto the open market and buy. And the COMEX, is these funds are not going to be happy when they see the price of 1,000 ounce bars, the premiums jumping higher and higher and higher. All right? Um, so it says right here, India's restocking is likely to trip over into 2023, but at some point it will dissipate. Well, that's what everybody says, right? Because nothing lasts forever. Um, but by extension, you could see some decent figures in 2023, but it will not match 2022. Now that's an analyst, right? And what I've been showing you guys on this channel is that analysts are consistently wrong. So I, I think I think what happens is the higher uh, level of degrees you get, uh, the more full of yourself you get. So you sort of kill brain cells. So I think at that point, it's just sort of like leveling out, right? And that's why I've been trying for two years. I've had the cardboard notes. I've, I got some notes with me right now. They're a little, they're a little greasy. That was delicious. But I've been trying to like put myself in this position. I'm about to show you guys. I'm about to start doing my news broadcast in a very interesting way uh, starting this next week. I'm really excited to do it uh, because uh, analysts are consistently wrong. And so I want to show you what's happening today right now. And then you're going to see it in the future, uh, the way Wall Street uh, takes it in and Main Street takes it in, right? And then you've already positioned yourself in the past because you saw what was happening. Now, right now, the dry Baltic index is crashing. Uh, their ships not are moving. They're not moving. Uh, Amazon, FedEx, and UPS are laying people off before Christmas. This never happened. 
ever in 20 years of me investing. And I'm sitting there saying it with a smile because I'm so freaking pumped because we are going to crush it. We are getting out of debt. We are uh, building our credit score so it's solid. You're going to need your credit score when this crash happens. You're going to have inflation hedges like gold and silver. And hey, I'm doing well. I'm doing great on all my commodities. All right. Um, lithium's on fire. Lithium's up 500% this year, I think, um, because they just don't have enough of it. All right. They want to build a bunch of electric cars and Milwaukee tools. And I'm not going to lie. Like if anyone works for Milwaukee and is watching this, feel free. I will do a free review. Just send me some tools. I love the Milwaukee tools. Here's your free plug. Um, but the point is they all run off lithium, right? I mean, I'm watching kids just crush it in their big wheels now with their uh, their their electric power <laughs> Milwaukee batteries. It's just amazing. But the point being is that what we're going to do is have these inflation hedges. We have some cash because there's these sudden spike down. These little mini crashes that are happening right now. Deflation in little places. And we're going to take advantage of those. Right. This isn't the time to buy a Lambo. Trust me. I look at them all the time. I like, you know, fancy car. I like fun cars, fast cars. I want to have a race car. I want to do all that stuff. But um, even though I've got the money deployed to that, I'm not going to do it because why buy the race car when you can own the race team someday? Right. And I want you all thinking like that. I know it sounds crazy and racing's not for you. Put your biggest dream in the comment section right now. I've always said that I used to own a palm tree. Thank you so much, Lily. I really appreciate it. And that is a very interesting emoji. I like that. Um, or I don't even know what that's called, a uh, little sticker. Point being is this, we are in a time in life, I got this other YouTuber just calling me now. He's like, he's always bad with his timing. Um, he is, watch this, I'm gonna go, he's gonna be live. I always promised I wouldn't do this. Hey, you're live right now, but nobody can hear you. So my point being is this, we're gonna absolutely crush it. And this is Chris Taylor from Financial uh, uh, Fitness. <laughs> What'd you say here? Tell everyone, say financial prepper. Oh, that's right. Cause your name used to be fitness, right? That's right. That's that didn't work. well, cause you're not in good shape. You should, that's right. you should, <laughs> I'm telling everybody right now about what's going on with the dry Baltic index and how it's completely collapsing. And I can't stop smiling right now. Cause I'm so freaking pumped. Um, but what is your last, if you don't mind, Chris, for the next 60 seconds or whatever, talk to the people about what this last year has been like for you financially, because I, just a little backstory, everybody, Chris was a, um, a subscriber of the channel. He met me when I was, I had the channel up for about, I don't know, eight months. We became really good friends. He said he wanted to start a YouTube channel because he was a successful real estate investor and owned his own six, very successful welding company. And now he's uh, sharing all of these kind of things on his channel as well about the economy. So Chris, sorry, I'll stop talking. What's the last year been like for you? Man, it was, uh, it's slow. It is like watching a, a train wreck in slow motion. You think it's going to happen. You think it's going to happen. And, you know, we start selling our rental properties and getting, we're bracing for impact. We're buying food. We're, we're getting the, you know, we're spreading this message of, Hey, there's hope at the end of this. Uh, as long as we can keep our subscribers and people from being part of the problem, we will be part of the solution as we come out of yeah. the next greatest depression that anybody on the planet has ever been through. It's going to be, it's going to be great. I know why you're smiling. <laughs> Are you watching I, me right now? Or, no, I'm not. Okay, all right. You're probably in the shop. I can, I can tell you're smiling on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Terry. You're, you're right though, Chris, because the thing is, and we get this comment all the time. You're like, I can't believe these guys could laugh about other people losing their homes. And I'm like, well, actually we're trying to warn all of them, but um, if they're related to me or you, they're probably not listening to us, but we're trying to warn them. But in the end, you can't warn everyone, right, Chris? That's right. And remember when you're talking to your family and friends, you cannot be a prophet in your own town. It's really hard to get them to listen to you. I had to go abroad on YouTube to find like-minded people. And man, have we found, we have found the best, most like-minded salt of the earth people on the planet. And they're in your comments and they're in my comments. And we, I just, I'm so pumped. We're going to crush it together. It's just, it's amazing. The community that is going to pull together and make these investments at the bottom, yeah. at the bottom. And they're going to make money for the rest of their life. Yeah. Not, nothing goes straight up. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm yeah. trying not to get everybody too excited because we're not there yet. Yeah. Keep in mind, I'm, I'm the worst at timing, but it's coming and it's, it's not as fast as I thought it would be. And uh, for it, it's giving everybody another chance to get prepared is what, what's so cool. And remember, you will beat the stock market by buying food. I've been saying that for a year and so far. Yes. 
it, it is. We're crushing it with the food thing. Yeah, and I talk about this all the time too, everyone. Uh, if you have just canned food, right? And don't go crazy and buy stuff you never eat. I've actually done that before. It was on sale. You're like, you're never going to eat cream of spinach. Blech. But my point being is um, you get stuff that's just normal that you would eat. And then as the food prices explode and people have less money for other things and need to dive into food, you're going to be able to take your cash and, and put that into places even like as small as like, let's say buying a, a car or a, a razor, a side-by-side -side that you've always wanted or a dirt bike. You know, sense, those are frivolous things, right? Think about businesses that are about to close their doors. In 2009, in 2010, I would literally go into stores that were going out of business and offer them one price for all of their inventory. I would take it all and sell it on eBay. I would absolutely crush it because all around the country and sometimes around the world, people had money and they saw my uh, stuff for sale and they would buy it. And I was making literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, Chris, what is your greatest dream that you want to accomplish during this crash? Like, what is something that you want to do? And, and just so you guys know, this is Financial Prepper on YouTube because I know you guys keep asking me. So thank you so much, Blue Steel. Uh, what's your yes. biggest dream, Chris? All right. What, I would, what would make me, I, I, when I'm 80 and I look back, when I'm 80 years old and I'm looking back at this time in history, I want to be able to say I helped as many people as I could get as wealthy as humanly possible yeah. by getting ready for the greatest collapse. And hopefully I'll be able to get some people in shape as well. I actually yeah. just made a cooking video for all my prepper people and people that are uh, getting ready. I'm trying to encourage people to buy quality canned goods and, and yep. get the right amount of protein and not, you know, hopefully we get through this and we're healthy at the other end. Is that, I hope that makes sense because that, that's, I'm passionate about that. And you know, crushing it in the financial sector. Well, and well. you can't, you can't crush it without a clear mind and, and your body cleaned up. So I trust me, I totally get it. So we're going to make a million people a million bucks, man. I really believe that. I know. I completely agree. And that's, I'm not joking. I couldn't hype it up more, but I mean, I'm known as the eternal hype man at my work at the fire station, but uh, literally the last 12 years I've been preparing for this and now to watch it coming uh, true, it's happening right in front of us. It blows me away. Doesn't it blow you away, Chris? It does. And hey, everybody, if you're sitting here right now and you enjoy what you see and you like what you're, you know, experiencing on the channel, please hit the like button. You'll never know how much it means to us, guys. It, it's, it's true. A, it gets the message out yeah. to the other like-minded people. Think about yeah. it. All your friends that you want to help, all you guys hit the like button and they see it. So. I'm like mouthing. I didn't plan this. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Well, hey, let me let you go because I want to share something more with them as I as I let you go. And uh, But I got to do it in private, so don't watch the video. Okay? All right, brother. Have an awesome all. Someday. See you, buddy. Bye. So here's the deal. I told you that I met Chris and uh, we became good friends. When I started this YouTube channel, I literally told my wife because she says, you need to get off of, of, of talking to your family and friends. I've told these guys this a long time, but I have a feeling there's some new people. So if you've never heard this story, please let me know. I've never heard it in the comment section. She says, nobody wants to listen to you. And I said, okay, then I'm going to start a YouTube channel. And I spoke this into existence. And I want you to understand that this isn't me being cocky. This is me trying to teach you something. The power of life and death is in your tongue, right? How you speak about yourself. Thank you so much, LaRonda. Uh, I really appreciate that super chat. Um, I'm going to buy 20 uh, McDonald's coffees. I got, wait, hold on. Stand by. I got one here and two here. I might have a problem. Um, or some more hair, hair gel. But I, I want to tell you this story. My uh, life changed because I spoke into existence my, my success in the future. And I want you guys to start speaking good things over yourselves. Regardless of what your family and friends are telling you, uh, I want you to speak positive over yourself, all right? I said to my wife, I said, I am going to go big. I am going to start the biggest YouTube channel in the world. And I am going to, and we are going to find the most amazing friends worldwide. There will never be a time in our future that we will not land in a city where we will have the most amazing friends meet us there. And that has happened so many times in the last two years. I cannot even begin to tell you all the stories. Chris is one of them. He has become one of my best friends in the last two years. And we have spoken almost every single day because we are like-minded. And I want to encourage you, if you feel alone or you feel stressed out, um, you I want you to, uh, thank you so much, Blue Steel. Um, I want you to have faith in yourself and confidence based off of my story right now that you just have to step out and speak truth. And what will happen is there's all kinds of stupid people out there. I get it. There's a lot of them. But there's even more good people. And there you're going to attract them like attracts like, 
If you're greedy, you're only going to attract greedy people or people that are needy, right? If you're a giver, you're only going to attract good people and givers, all right? So, uh, guys, my phone's overheating. It's about to shut down, so I better end this right now. The Economic Ninja is out. Well, that was quick.